O salutare sostia, que celibanis hostium, bella premu hostilia, da robur fer auxilium, Unitrino que domino, sed sempiterna gloria, qui vitam si ne termino, nobis donet in patria. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you're here with me, that you see me, that you hear me. May I spend this time fruitfully in your presence, growing to love you more. And together we'll pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen.
Friends, would you say this holy prayer after me, line by line? It's called the unity prayer. It brings a complete supernatural protection over any place where it is prayed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, would you say this after me? My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Here's a shorter prayer to the Virgin. Three lines to bring her victory. If you would say this after me, a great victory is coming to the whole world. If you would say this after me, O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. One more time. O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Amen. With your permission, Jesus, I will speak to your people for a moment. The Lord said it's okay. Beloved, I love Jesus in the Eucharist, don't you? Don't you love him? What a gift we have, what a gift. Something amazing happened at my chapel just a month ago, and I should share that with you. I wasn't planning on it, but as I prepared, the Lord asked me to share it with you today. I'll just take a couple of minutes. I was giving a retreat to the youth there in Georgia at my own chapel, and we have a chapel called the Apostolic House, the House of the Apostles, and in the woods outside of Georgia, where I have the joy of pastoring a Catholic homeschooling community. We actually live out in the woods. We have seven chapels on the property. Even the teenagers make holy hours on their own. Well, I was giving a special retreat to the girls on Saturday and to the boys on Sunday. This was with, um, you know, the missionaries of charity, Mother Teresa's sisters. I'm close friends with them, and they have a house in Atlanta. So they brought their kids out to me, their youth groups. Well, Sun, Saturday went really, really well with the girls, and now it's Sunday, and I'm doing the retreat for the boys. It's also going well, but I noticed that um, the boys, for some reason, needed a little more work, a little more work spiritually, for some reason, and believe we had a powerful, uh, like a morning mass, and a talk, and a rosary, and another talk, and we had these wonderful teenage musicians with me, I mean, like professionals, and they were leading the kids in these beautiful, charismatic-type Catholic hymns. were beautiful. Then I had to leave for a couple of hours. I had to go to another church, believe it or not, and do a funeral mass. 
and I let the sisters take over, the nuns, then I came back. And so as I'm driving, as you probably do too, I'm usually praying the rosary when I drive. I'm praying something when I'm driving. And beloved brothers and sisters, perhaps you know what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. In my heart, I was like crying out to God for the teenagers. And it was kind of a mysterious position that I was in because we had a powerful retreat and good things were being said and the kids were receiving it. But there was something more that was needed. I could feel it. It's like, here's a good retreat, maybe an A. If you wouldn't grade it like from A to F, an A. And it wasn't enough. In other words, in our Catholic faith, we need something more than doctrines in the head. We need love in the heart. Amen? Especially teenagers. Our faith has to be in the heart. And when the Eucharistic miracles were examined, every time, like in, in Lanciano, Italy, when it was with the permission of the Holy Father, they took a little tiny piece of the tissue of the Eucharistic miracle in Lanciano. It's heart tissue. The church has always taught us, and now science, again, again, science is proving the validity of our Catholic faith. It's heart tissue in the Eucharistic miracles. It always is. And so, beloved, the Lord wants to speak to us from heart to heart. Notice it's not his brain. It's not brain tissue. Isn't that interesting? And it's not his mighty arm. The Bible speaks of the mighty arm of the Lord. It's not, it's not the tissue from your arm. It's heart tissue in the Eucharist. I've had two masses. I've been privileged to see the host bleed in two of my masses where blood came on the host. And so I know these miracles are true because I've seen them in my own past twice. Surprise, I didn't do it. I was shocked too. Beloved, our teenagers need a Catholic faith that's not head to head, but heart to heart. Amen? So I was almost crying on the way to the funeral mass and then on the way back from that church, back to my chapel, to continue the retreat with the kids like from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. For the, for the evening. And I said, Lord, you've got to help me. I know you gave me the right words, and I know I spoke what you wanted me to speak. And I know the kids received it. They weren't fighting it. There's something more. We have to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. Amen? we got to love him and live for him and be united with him as one. Amen? I said, God, you got to help me. I can't do this alone. I want to give them something more. Please, please. I could tell that they received it, but they might go home and forget it by the next day. You know, it might be good words. Lord, something, help, help, help me. So I went back. And I preached to the kids first about Eucharistic miracles. I've had the joy to see them in my mass twice, as I've told you, but I've been to some of them too around the world. That got their attention. I said, now, let's have solemn adoration. And so I went to the tabernacle to take out the Lord, and the musicians began playing O Salutaris. They knew just what to do. Even they were teenagers, they are very talented, right what to do. And I put the Lord on the altar, and I bowed to the Lord, and I came around in front to meet the boys in adoration. I knew that I He's looking back at me. The face of Jesus Christ appeared on the host. The face of Jesus with his eyes and his beard and his hair. I've seen that before, but it's been a long time. And I said, boys, I said, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I see the Lord and he's looking at me right now. He's looking at you. He's here with us today. And the boy who was frozen, he couldn't close the reason not. I said, come up with your body, come up quietly. All the boys who had to be all around you, you're in the sanctuary. They all began to see the Lord. He 
I won't go on much longer, but Our Lady said at Fatima and several other places that when her triumph comes, and it's coming, beloved, it's coming, don't despair, don't give up. Something magnificent, never be heard before in the annals of history is coming, the great triumph of the church. Mama Mary said, that the triumph of my Immaculate Heart will be the reign of the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus. In other words, beloved, can you imagine this? Because this is what's going to happen. Even Bishop Sheen said that through Our Lady of the entire Muslim world will be unpacked. Did you know that? The entire Muslim world will be unpacked through Mary. Until one day soon, the triumph comes. There will be no more crowing about habits and real beings in the worship. That will be gone. It will be gone. It will be gone. Everyone will be happy. It will be real happiness. Amen. Can you imagine? We'll be playing here, and there will be the Buddhist monks and the Buddhist monks and the Hindus and the Muslims and the Southern Baptists as well. And they'll be right here with you and I. Charge you with the name of Jesus and Mary, and you become. 
how the numerous saints were called to be from the living. Amen? Amen. Friends, if you pray now to Jesus, when you do that, pray with me. You say this after me, beloved. I am all thine, Lord Jesus. I am all thine, Lord Jesus. And all that I have is thine. Be the immaculate heart of Mary. And again, we are all thine, Lord Jesus. We are all thine, Lord Jesus. And all that we have is thine. Be the immaculate heart of Mary. Amen. We will love the Lord in the Eucharist with Mary's pure divine love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
Isn't God good? We shouldn't need these little nuggets for our faith, but we do. And God knows that. So, uh, Father, just to give you an update, we were going to have a talk at 2.30 on the Divine Mercy, and, um, but he needs rest. So we told him to go to the rectory and get some rest. So what we'll do is we'll just have quiet adoration thanking the Lord for his gift of himself for us. And he's telling us, I think, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? So at three o'clock, we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And Elsie, you kind of, Help us sing. The, um, so maybe I can lead the beginning and then each of the decades, you can help us with that. Okay, this would be wonderful. So let's spend some quiet time with our Lord until three o'clock. Father will come back after our chaplet, maybe about 3.15 and give us a talk uh, at that time. Okay, thank you.
We'll begin the chaplet in just a minute. Um, if anyone needs a Divine Mercy pamphlet, we have extras over here. So raise your hand if you need one and someone will get one to you. Thank you. 
if you notice this pamphlet has the, the novena of divine mercy on one side and then the back side has the prayers of the chaplet. And at the end of, of the chaplet, after the closing prayer, the beautiful prayer for divine mercy at the end that you'll see on here that I thought maybe we could try praying together, maybe for our country. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and then empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
renunciar a sanar the whole world. Uh, holy and mortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Now let's pray this prayer for divine mercy that follows that. O oh, greatly merciful God, infinite goodness, today all mankind calls out from the abyss of its misery to your mercy, to your compassion, O oh God, and it is with mighty voice of misery that it cries out, Gracious God, do not reject the prayer of this earth's exiles. O Lord, goodness beyond our understanding, who are acquainted with our misery through and through, and know that by our own power we cannot ascend to you. We implore you, anticipate us with your grace and keep on increasing your mercy in us, that we may faithfully do your holy will all through our life and at death's hour. Let the omnipotence of your mercy shield us from the darts of our salvation's enemies, that we may with confidence as your children await your final coming, that day known to you alone. And we expect to obtain everything promised us by Jesus, in spite of all our wretchedness. For Jesus is our hope. Through his merciful heart, as through an open gate, we pass through to heaven. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, with your permission, I pray and speak to your beloved sons and daughters. Brothers and sisters, you just prayed the chaplet of divine mercy, is that right? I prayed it uh, quietly upstairs in my bedroom. I'm glad you prayed it here. But we're giving you a prayer that you might say is one of the fruits of divine mercy. This is a prayer from Africa called the Precious Blood of Jesus Prayer and Devotion. And when the bishops of Nigeria approved of this prayer and this devotion, they said in their letter that this is a continuation of the divine mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be his name, and his holy mother Mary, appeared to a young man, a teenager in Nigeria, a teenager named Barnabas. And Barnabas, there in Africa, had never been baptized. He was not Catholic or, or Christian. He wasn't any religion. He's what they call a, a quote-unquote pagan. Not in a bad, we don't mean that in an evil way, but someone who's never had any religion at all. Never been to church of any nature. Was out in the jungle, in the woods of Nigeria, when Jesus appeared to him. Can you imagine that? A teenager in the woods, and Jesus and Mary appeared to him and started talking to him. And they began to appear to him almost on a daily basis. Now, here's the thing. He didn't know who they were. What's your name? Jesus. Who? Jesus. What's your name, beautiful lady? Mary. By the way, they speak English in Nigeria. That's a common language there. And so Jesus and Mary began teaching Barnabas, giving them what we'd call catechesis. And so they taught this young fellow about the Most Holy Trinity and about the Catholic Church and the seven sacraments and about the virtues and the graces. Finally, after about a year of this, Jesus and his mother told little Barnabas, by the way, he's still alive. He's in the seminary now to become a priest. He's in the seminary. They told Barnabas to go see the parish priest. And now he'd never been in the Catholic church in his life. And they said, ask the priest for your baptism. So he went up to the priest and said, Father, would you please baptize me? The priest didn't know him. And he said, well, we've got to give you lessons. He said, well, I've already had my lessons. He says, what do you mean? Who taught you? Uh, Jesus and Mary. Yeah, right, right. So we tested him. The boy knew more about the faith than anybody in the whole parish. He tested him right then and there. He had all the right answers. I imagine Jesus and Mary are pretty good catechism teachers, don't you think? He got like all A's. And so they baptized him almost immediately and gave him his confirmation. The Lord, as he began, as he taught Barnabas the Catholic faith, taught him this new devotion to the blood of Jesus. And what, beloved, is present at every Mass? The blood of Jesus. Amen? Well, beloved, there on the altar, we're not even at Mass now, but it's almost like Mass, you know, solemn adoration. What is on the altar? Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so we know from the Council of Trent, we know from Catholic tradition, that in the consecrated host is both the body and blood. Is that right? Yes, they're both present there. That's why many Eucharistic miracles, the host begins to bleed. I was saying Mass in Texas many years ago. And I was asked by my superiors to go to a certain church on a border town between Mexico and Texas to celebrate the Sunday Masses there because there was a division in the church. A kind of a nasty, you know, a big division. And it was, you know, more or less between the Mexican Americans and the gringos. Terrible. I don't know how it got started. But they asked me if I would go and preach there, so I did, of course. 
And it just so happens that Sunday, you know what the gospel was? John chapter 6. What is that? The Eucharist. The man who eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever. Amen. Now you say it too, okay? Because the word of God is a tonic. It's healthy. When you say it, when you say the word of God, it drives evil out of us and it brings healing graces within us. It's powerful. The Bible says it's more powerful than a two-edged sword. Amen? Say this after me. Say this after me. The man who eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever. I will live forever. Do you believe it? Yes. And if you have any doubt, you ask Mama Mary to give you her faith. Mama went to Mass every day. You know that, right? Who was her priest? St. John the Evangelist! Your parish! And when Mama appeared at the approved and amazing apparitions in Knock, Ireland, she appeared in visible form, so the whole town saw her. Who appeared with Mother Mary in Knock? St. John the Evangelist. Is that amazing? St. Joseph, St. John the Evangelist were there with Mother Mary. And there also was an altar of sacrifice. And the Lamb of God was standing on the altar, seen by the whole village. Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, I was asked to go say Mass at this parish in Texas. So I said Saturday night Masses and all the Sunday Masses, a big parish, a lot of Masses. John chapter 6. And so what did I do? I preached about the gospel, about the Eucharist. If anything can unite us as one people, it's faith in the divine presence of the Eucharist. Amen? And one day soon, the whole world will be Catholic. The whole universe will be Catholic. Amen? The angels are already Catholic, the angels. But now the people will all be Catholic as well. And so we preach about that. It was a joyful time. It, it sort of changed the parish. And uh, the fire came down over us. And so after the homily, I went to the altar. And I prayed the prayers of consecration. This is my body given for you. And I held up the host. And when I put the host back down on the patent, the top host of the smaller ones there, had a one bright red circle like blood on it. And the presence emanating from the altar, from the Eucharist, was like heat, like fire, like a flame of love. And so with the sign of peace, I turned to Lupe. She is the sacristan for that parish, Guadalupe. Lupe has been setting up for Mass at that parish, at that time, every single day, Monday through Sunday, every day, Sunday and weekday masses, every day for 34 years has not missed one day in 34 years. Every single mass in that church. So I knew Lupe, a beautiful old Hispanic woman. I said, Lupe, yes, Father. Lupe, do you see this? Yes, Father. Lupe, did you set up the host for Mass before Mass? I know she did. She does every Mass for 34 years. Did you set up the host? Yes, Father. Was this host with that bright red blood spot, was that there before the Mass? No, Father. But during the consecration, Father, we back here, the, the ministers of the Eucharist, we felt fire all, we were burning up with heat. And so, beloved, the top host had a bright red circle like blood on it. I knew it was the Lord. The altar was burning in front of me. So in Holy Communion, as I gave out Holy Communion to that beautiful parish, I didn't give that one out. I just worked around it because it was so fun just to look at him. Whoa, you're there. I love you. Thank you. I just had to keep him there. He's my, he's my buddy. He's my best friend. He's my boss and my savior. Well, 
big church, a lot of people got near the end. I thought, you know what? I'm going to show the last three people just to have public witnesses. The church is very scientific. We should not be afraid of science. True science always validates true faith. That's the Roman Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith always validates true science. There's, there is fake science and there is fake religion. But there is true science and there is true religion. Amen? They always work together because the God of true science is the God of the Catholic Church. Amen? In fact, science, we, we would not even have science today if it was not for the gospel. It is through the Christian faith that science came into existence in the Western world. Almost all scientists were Catholic until like 100 years ago. Well, beloved, I thought I should have three witnesses. And so I showed one, and then the second one. The third was a giant boy. He was like a football player, like six foot eight. Huge guy. I thought, well, that's a good witness. I said, do you see this? Yes, Father. But I gave him another host. I had to give him that one. And I brought it back on the altar. I asked Lupe to get me a special pix, a special container just for that host. And I put it in a special container in the tabernacle. I finished Holy Mass. As I walked down, I looked up. I mean, it's in the evening time on Sunday night. 100 people were lined up for confession, but there were no confessions scheduled. And now the only priest there. They weren't scheduled. They lined up. They didn't say a word. Jesus is in the Eucharist. And when he reigns, look out. He was there in the church. They lined up for confession. And I went into the confessional and heard confessions till after midnight. I heard every single one. Figured I might catch a few big fish, you know what I mean? <laughs> heard every single one. And when I got done, like, like from 7 p.m. till after midnight, I sort of crawled back to the altar, tired and sweating. And my crew, they were all there waiting for me. I have the best team in the world. They love me and they pray for me. They didn't stop. They prayed the whole time I was in the confessional. They prayed for me, but also for the penitents that they make good confessions. I was so touched by their charity. And I said, listen, I have a, I have a, a gift for you. Thanks for staying. Thanks for helping me. One was my driver. I said, guys, line up here, would you? So five members of my team lined up there and knelt down on the sanctuary. They didn't know what I had for them. I went to the tabernacle. I opened it, took out the special picks. I opened the picks and went to the first one. And I said, Juan, this is Jesus. And I showed him the host with the blood on it. And Juan is a big fellow, a big giant guy. He began to shake uncontrollably and fell on the ground unconscious for half an hour. Boom! I didn't touch him. I promise you I did not hit him in any way. He fell down in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I was as shocked as anybody else was when every single one of my team were overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because, beloved, is precisely the death of Jesus on the cross that not only paid the price for my sins, but won for me and you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The blood of Jesus was paid as the price that this little sinner could receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? So every time you and I invoke the blood of Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit flies down from heaven. When you invoke the price that was paid, the gift that was won comes. Amen? And so the Lord taught Barnabas in Nigeria special prayers. You can look up all of them, by the way, on the internet. They all have the imprimatur. Well, I was at the world meeting of families in Philadelphia a couple years ago, and I finished the meeting I had at midday, was walking down this huge convention center in the middle of Philadelphia, walking down, and the bishops got out of their meeting at the same time. So as I walked down this giant hallway, all the bishops come out from the world meeting, like 500 bishops. I'm walking, and the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to say hello to that bishop. 
Now listen, there's 500 bishops. I don't know most of them. I've never seen this one before. He's a young African bishop. The Lord said, I want you to say hello to him. I said, okay. So I went up to him and said, hello, bishop. He said, hello, father. I said, where are you from? He says, I'm from Nigeria. Well, I am the one priest in this country spreading that devotion to the blood of Jesus from Nigeria. I said, you're from Nigeria? The blood of Jesus devotion. He says, yes, Father, I know. I said, it came through Barnabas. He says, yes, I know Barnabas. I said, it has the imprimatur. He said, I know, I gave it the imprimatur. I couldn't believe it. Out of 500 bishops, the Lord said, talk to that one. I did. He's the one that gave it the imprimatur. Amen. And the same thing will happen to you as you were filled with God's Holy Spirit. Every Catholic should be spirit-filled. Spirit-filled. The best way to get the Holy Spirit is A, pray the rosary every day. B, go to Mass. Receive Holy Communion and adore the Lord. And C, pray the blood of Jesus. Wherever you pray that prayer, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, the Spirit comes down over you right then. So I looked through the book. I read all the prayers and prayed them. I said, Lord, I need one to give to your people. I have a traveling ministry. So I looked through the whole book and found the shortest, shortest, easiest one. That's the one you have in your hands. Aren't I a nice priest? I found the easiest one, and that's for you. And this prayer, by the way, this is so interesting, so interesting. That prayer in your hand on the little red card it was given to Barnabas by the Virgin Mary. She gave that prayer to him. You see why I'm saying that? Because mama is not centered on herself. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. Amen? Mama is utterly Christocentric. She's totally centered on Jesus. She wants nothing other than your salvation. Amen? And she knows that your salvation and mine come through the shed blood of her divine son. She knows this. She says, I myself was saved by my son's blood in advance. Amen? So this prayer, Mama taught the visionary, it's only 12 words. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Again, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. That's easy, isn't it? You can have it memorized this afternoon. Now, Our Lady said to Barnabas, she said, Barnabas, if you want to know how to pray well and to please my son Jesus, say this little prayer 500 times a day. Uh-oh, now you just got mad at me. But it's up to you. But I do, I say it 500 times daily. This prayer, I've noticed, has a particular grace of deliverance. I would say exorcism, but I mean deliverance is released from the devil at a minor level, but still important. Let's say somebody's alcoholic. It has a deliverance or liberation grace to it, and also the grace of inner healing. When the bishops approved this prayer you have in your hand and the devotion, they said, this is a continuation of the divine mercy that you just prayed. This is divine mercy 2.0. That's what it is. It's divine mercy at a higher level of liberation. Now, can I share with you at least one story of what I've experienced with this prayer? And then I want to pray it with you for a couple of minutes in front of the Lord. The blood we will invoke is present physically there in the monstrance. It truly is there, the Lord. I was visiting one of my brothers, Father Anthony. He's a priest as well. At that time, Father Tony had a, pre, had a parish near Corpus Christi, Texas. My brother would invite me to come and do a healing mass at his church once or twice a year. I was there to do a healing mass at his parish. 
in the rectory that afternoon before the mass, an emergency call came over the intercom system in the rectory. Emergency in the counseling room, all priests. Emergency in the counseling room, all priests. There were five of us priests. It was quite an emergency, but you never know in a rectory what you're going to get. You know I mean, anything can come through at any time. So I went down there, I ran down there. My brother was already there, Father Tony, and some other priests. And I received the word as I ran up with the secretary that it was a boy with a drug overdose. With a drug overdose. This is a true story. So I opened the door and peeked in. My brother's already there talking to the boy. Um, he's in bad shape. I look at him, I look at my brother, and I look at his grandmother who brought the boy. By boy, I mean a young man, I would say 24 years of age. I looked at him, and I realized immediately as I looked in his eyes, I did it on purpose, it's called the discernment of spirits. I looked in his eyes, and to put it very simply, I saw a demon. The boy was demonized. I could see the demon in his spirit. Jesus said, your eyes are the mirror of the soul. Isn't it true? Your eyes are the mirrors of your soul. If you know how to see, you can see a lot with somebody's eyes. If you're clean yourself, you can see when you meet other people what's there. I saw the demon. And so I told my brother and the other priest, go take a break. I'm the only one of the group that was certified as an exorcist, I have that training and that certification. I said, you guys take a break. They were worn out anyway. I really felt sorry for them. We priests work hard. I said, you guys take a break. I'll take this one. They all left, and I sat down with a young man and his grandmother, and they told me the story. He was there from the emergency room of the hospital. He came from the hospital in Corpus Christi straight to the parish. He was dying of a drug overdose. Why was he there? Well, he was doing illegal drugs. And when the nurses and doctors took his blood to find out what the drug was, they could not determine which drug it was. It was a new one, by the way. It's a new drug. So it wasn't crack or heroin. They thought it was one of those, because he was turning purple and shaking. And they said, please tell us what you've taken because you're dying. But in Texas, even if you're dying of a drug overdose, if it's an illegal drug, you are arrested. They'll keep you there in the emergency room, but they'll put a policeman with a gun next to you. He has to stay with you till you get better, then you go straight to the prison, or if you die, then he says goodbye. But that's the law in Texas. If you've taken an, an, an illegal drug, even if you're dying, the officer arrests you right then and there. He won't put handcuffs on you, but he'll stand right outside your door. The young man did not want to be arrested. He was taking a drug that had just been made illegal six months before in Texas. Just so you know, it's called synthetic marijuana. Synthetic marijuana. Eleven boys had died using synthetic marijuana in the last 12 months. Eleven young men died from using this drug. So the Texas legislature made it illegal immediately. The boy had a secret stash he was getting from somebody. He was taking it every day. Now he was dying of an overdose. Because he was an adult, he was able to sign himself out of the hospital legally. If he was a minor, he could not have done that. He would not tell them what he had taken because he did not want to go to jail. It was actually a bit foolish, to be honest with you. So he signed the papers, though they begged him not to. He called his grandmother. She picked him up. Those holy Mexican grandmothers, look out. Oh, those holy grandmothers. She put him in the car and drove him whoosh, straight to the church. She said, there's a healing mass tonight. You're coming with me. Straight to the church she brought him, brought him to the rectory. It was in the afternoon. So I sat down with him. I said, okay, call your mom and dad. He's shaking and he's purple. No, I can't. They'll kill me. And I was thinking, well, you're going to die anyway. What do you care if they kill you? But I didn't say that out loud. He says, father, they'll kill me. I says, no, they won't. Call them. No, he started crying. You have to call them. They're going to help you. They'll be mad at me. No, they will love you. So he called them and they came quickly within 10 minutes. And I gave his mother and his father and his grandmother and the young man that card you have in your hand. And we began to pray it together. That's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. 
He said, pray this prayer with his family. So we began to pray. So we're going to pray it right now, as I did with that boy, you and I right now, 10 times in a row. We're going to pray for anybody in your family who is addicted to any drug, marijuana or anything else, including alcohol. Let's pray it 10 times now that if it's you or someone in your family, the deliverance and the healing will begin to come today. Amen? Then I'll tell you the rest of the story, but let's say it now 10 times for anyone with addiction here or in your family. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Beloved, this is how we do it. I'm going to say the first half of the prayer, the first six words, and then you'll say the second half of the prayer, the second six words. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. Isn't that powerful? It's simple, but it's powerful. It has an imprimatur, which has been approved. It was given from the lips of the Holy Mother of God. She taught us this prayer. We're going to use it again. Let's pray 10 more right now. I'm going to ask you to lead me. The Lord says to pray for anybody in your family who is suffering depression or suicidal temptations. You know, sad, depressed, or suicidal. That's a serious affliction. Sometimes it's demonic. We're going to pray it 10 times in a row for anybody in your family or anyone here who's suffering from depression or suicidal temptations. Amen? Very important. God can heal anything and anyone. So, beloved, you lead me. You say the first half, I'm going to answer you 10 times in a row for those who are afflicted in our own families. All together, most... Save us and the whole world. 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 Teach us how to count. <laughs> it's a new prayer I made up. Better one too many than one too few. Amen. Why don't we say 10 more? Maybe that was a sign. Was As we prayed that last 10, what came to me was this. This is very interesting. I know you'll know what I mean. The Lord says, pray for his people that God would free us from self-hatred. See, now I'm being anointed by the Holy Spirit. You know what that means? My body is tingling with electricity right now. Pray for those here today that you're being afflicted with that torment of self-hatred. That's not holy, by the way. It's not good to hate yourself. You don't want to be egotistical. No, never arrogant. We want to accept ourselves as creations of the all-beautiful God. Amen? It's not good to hate yourself. That's not good. We're going to ask the Lord to free us from any spirit of self-hatred in the church. Okay? I'm going to leave this one, and you would answer. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now, say it with like you mean it. You know, say it with faith. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 
most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, beloved, to go back to Texas, I gave the father and the mother of the young man and his grandmother and the boy himself that prayer you have in your hand. I was determined to pray it with them all 500 times. So we each took turns leading it 50 times. The boy is purple and he's shaking. He's dying. But God told me what to do, and I trust God. He's the divine physician. And so we began, I led the first 50. And what I do, beloved, when I pray this daily, I use my rosary beads. I go around the rosary on every Hail Mary bead. And so then I've said it how many times? 50. So I go around my rosary how many times? 10 times with that prayer every day. Oh, my heavens, if you could see what I have seen. So I led the first 50. And dad and mom and grandma and the young man answered me. As I led the first 50, the boy began to what we call manifest. That means the demonic element began to come out. And he began to scream. He actually screamed. It was not a human scream. Don't mean to scare anybody. Don't be afraid. We always win. We always win. Amen? We always win. Well, if you read your Bible, your gospel, every time Jesus and the apostles set someone free from the devil... What's the first thing it says? The person screams. There's a demonic howl that comes out of them. That's not bad. That's actually good. It means it's leaving, you see? We said it 50 times. That boy screamed like you've never heard before. He screamed. Doesn't matter. We just kept on going. I said, Papa, his dad, you lead the next 50. It's good to get the fathers involved in their son's healing. Amen? The father is like the priest of the family. I said, Papa, you lead it now. The dad led it 50 times. And the boy stopped screaming. It was gone, whatever it was. But he began to weep and cry. And I mean from his bowels. He cried from his stomach, from his guts. It was the saddest cry I've ever heard. That's why he got involved in drugs in the first place. He was so lonely and so broken. His wife had left him. He was crying, sad. As the father led them, he was weeping. We kept going. When dad finished, he calmed down. I said, Mama, you lead the next 50. Mama led the next 50. As Mama led it, he cried again. But this time, not so deep, not so loud. It was a soft cry. Much better, you might say. You could see he was being progressively healed and released. Mama got done. I said, Abuela, that's Mexican for grandma. Abuela, you lead the next 50. She led the next 50, no crying at all. Shaking, but no crying. Then I said, hijo, son, you lead the next 50. The boy led the next 50 all by himself. He did it perfectly, with no shaking. That was 250 done. He already looked 10 times better. No screaming, no crying, no shaking. The purple was gone. His flesh was to regular color now. I said, let's keep going. When you're winning, don't stop. So let's, let's finish it. So I did 50 more. 50, Papa 50, Mama 50, Grandma 50, and the young man 50. So how many did we say all together? 500. Listen to this. The young man led the last 50. He was perfectly well by then. When he finished, he said, most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we answered, save us in the whole world. Suddenly, when the boy finished and we answered him, he looked at me and he said to me, Father, it's gone. Why is that significant? Because I never said to the boy or his parents or his grandmother that he had a demon. I never said it out loud. I looked at my brother, the other priest, and said, you guys go, I'll handle this. And I winked at them. They knew what that meant. They knew there was a demonic problem. We could tell it was. They knew it was demonic. They, they left so I could take care of it. I never said it out loud. But when we got to number 500, he said, Father, it's gone. I said, I know it's gone. God just set you free. Amen?
Isn't the Lord great? And so when he got up to go, I said, now when you go home, yes, Father, I want you to say it 500 more times when you get home to make sure it doesn't come back. You know what I mean? That's in the Bible too. He'll, he'll go in the desert and come back, the devil. Say it 500 times more when you get home tonight before you go to bed. The boy, beloved, was completely healed and set free. I came back to do another healing mass at my brother's parish many months later. After a mass, a regular daily mass, I was vesting in, in the sacristy, putting on my blacks. People were coming for prayers. I prayed over many, many people for more than an hour after mass. Each one came for a blessing. This is just a regular daily mass at night. When I got all done, I was putting on my blacks. When the sacristan said, Father, there's one more. I said, oh, where? I couldn't see anybody else. It was a huge sacristy. In the back of the sacristy, in the shadows, there was a young man. I said, come. I didn't even see him. A young man came up to me dressed in a three-piece suit, tie. He looked like a movie star. He came up. I said, how are you? What can I do? For he shook my hand. I didn't know who he was. He said, Father, yes. I came back to thank you. That was the boy who had been possessed. He said, since that day, I not only have not touched any drugs at all, zero in six months, the desire for the drugs left me entirely that same day. The desire. Amen? And that's why the Bible says about Jesus, he does all things well. Amen? All things he does well. He saved that boy from dying in front of us. He removed the demon from him. He took out the desire for drugs and restored his entire life. Amen? Beloved, your Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. And the church has always taught that in the host, in the Eucharist, is the resurrected and glorified Christ. Did you know that? It's the risen Christ in the Eucharist. He is alive. And he says, let me help you. Let me help you. God is not dead. He has risen from the dead. And he can do anything to help you and I. Amen? And so before I finish, we're going to say this a few more times. Let's go ahead and pray it for a few more, perhaps, afflictions. Let's pray for this, another 10, for the healing of your faith. Sometimes my faith has to be healed. It's really weak, you see, maybe small as a grasshopper. We need to make our faith strong like Mary's faith. Let's pray for the healing of our faith so we have the faith of St. John the Evangelist. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Most precious
You were made for heaven. The whole world was made for you, but you were made for heaven. Amen? Amen. We're going to this next chance that you have the grace called hope in Spanish Esperanza. The gift of hope means I trust that God loves me. I trust we will get to heaven. Amen? <laughs> Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us. 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 Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was
Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us in the peace of the kingdom, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. the divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.
we praise thy name, Lord of all, we bow before thee, all honor thy scepter claim, all in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy name. Beloved, what we'll do now, I know we have Holy Mass at five. I'm going to open up the um, special package, the safety package for the robe. And I'm going to stand right in the center there. Feel free to come up like at Holy Communion and place both of your hands on Padre Pio's robe and ask Padre to pray to Jesus and Mary for whatever you need. It can be anything. You ask God. Let him show you what to ask for. So let me go ahead and open this now. I'm telling you, friends, it's so holy, you can feel it when you touch it. This is the robe he used to wear. Feel free to come up. You have not touched the robe yet.